Number four thing to consider. A light year is a distance. It's not a time. It's a distance. It's the distance light can travel in a year at today's speed. A light year could be done in one second if you speeded the light up. It's simply a distance. It's like so many gazillion miles. I think a six trillion miles is a light year. Okay, number five. Since the speed of light is not proven to be consistent, why would star distance have anything to do with age of the universe? Some people say, oh, wait a minute now. I know we can't measure the distance with uh, tri triangulation, parallax trigonometry. What about measuring with Cepheid variables or red shift? Well, that's the other way they try to do it, and also loaded with flaws in the theory there. The red shift is the idea that when light goes uh, from a star, the red is shifted over. They look at the light through a spectroscope, and you'll see black lines on there, and the black lines are shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. You get the normal spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, but the black lines are shifted red. And they'll say, wow, this is proof the star is receding. It's, running, it's moving away from us. That could be, I don't know, but there might be other ways to answer this. This is called the Doppler effect. If a train is coming toward you, it squeezes the sound waves in as the train makes noise, and you hear it, it drops pitch as it goes past you. It's called the Doppler effect. If you're going past the sound source or the sound source is going past you, either way, it works the same. Sound is it's called compressed coming in and refracted or stretched going out. Well, they thought possibly if the star is coming in, it would squeeze the light waves, whatever light waves are, and make a blue shift. If the star is leaving, it would make a red shift. And so when the red shift was discovered years ago, they looked around the heavens and found most of the stars are giving a red shift. And they said, wow, this proves they're leaving. No, it doesn't, but that was the assumption. And then they said, if all the stars are moving away, that proves there was a Big Bang. That was the evidence for the Big Bang Theory, the red shift. Talk about a lack of logic, but uh, that's what they said. Okay. This fellow says there was an early sign that red shifts reliably indicate the distance of galaxies. For quasars, however, the diagram shows a wide scatter and apparent brightness at every red shift. He said, in fact, there is little correlation of brightness to red shift at all. Either quasars come in an extremely wide range of intrinsic luminosities, as most people believe, or the red shifts do not indicate distance. Sky and Telescope, December 94. Um, same magazine said, uh, thus for the only conclusion that can be drawn is that at least some quasars are relatively nearby and a large fraction of their red shift is due to something other than expansion of the universe. So if somebody tells you we know the distance to stars because of red shift, say, I'm sorry, that is simply not correct. We don't know the distance because of red shift. Get the book, The Evolution Cruncher, from our ministry. It's $5 for a 900-page book. Excellent book, loaded with stuff on creation evolution. He's got a whole section about the Doppler effect and the expanding universe. Well, Science News 95 said, Another set of observations indicates that the universe appears to be 8.4 to 10.6 billion years old. The new work relied on the Hubble Space Telescope to extain, obtain distance to faraway galaxies. A team led by Tanver at the University of England used a two-step method to estimate the Hubble constant. I always get a kick out of that. Here they've got an equation which involves a number that you're going to multiply, like an algebraic equation, and they can change that number. They call it a constant, but they change it all the time. Okay? I taught algebra for years. I'm telling you, you change one letter in an equation or one value in an equation, you change the outcome. That's why they're always getting wild numbers for the age of the universe, because the Hubble constant is not a constant at all. Okay, let's go on here. He said, first they observed a type of standard candle, stars known as Cepheid variables, to find the distance to the spiral galaxy M96. He said, you have to be very careful about drawing conclusions because of the Hubble constant, because measurements have huge systematic errors. Astronomers believed the veil, one of the best studied supernova remnants, was 2,500 years, light years away and 18,000 years old. They were quite wrong. In fact, the veil is only 1,500 light years away and 5,000 years old, from Discover Magazine, January of 2001. An article about Rip Van Winkle showing stars are much younger than they thought. Um, the article, University Around Us at Cambridge University, said even the nearest Cephids are so remote, it's difficult to determine their absolute distance with any accuracy, any great accuracy. All large distances in astronomical literature are subject to an error of perhaps 10% from this cause alone. He said, we know that faintness, you know, how bright the star is, arises from two causes, distance and absorbing matter in space, and it's generally not possible to apportion it between the two. Get the book, The Evolution Cruncher, and find out what happened to Halt and Harp, who dared to question the redshift theory. Good way to lose your job. There's discrimination against those, because they're looking for, looking for anything to hang on to this dumb Big Bang Theory is the problem. Big Bang Theory is a dud. Fred Hoyle said that 30 years ago. 
or 20 years ago. Okay, Isaiah 40 tells us the Lord sits on the circle of the earth and it says he stretched out the heavens like a curtain. Isaiah 42 talks about the stretching of the heavens. Isaiah 45 says he stretched out the heavens. Jeremiah 10 says he stretched out the heavens. There are several theories of what's causing the red shift. One theory is the stretching from the creation. This is a normal thing you would expect because he stretched out the heavens like a curtain, just like the Bible told us. Maybe that's the only reason we have a red shift. Second theory is the light's getting tired traveling great distance. Third theory is as it travels through whatever space is made up, maybe space is nothing, maybe space is something, we don't know what space is, but as the light travels, that may automatically be a phenomena that causes the red shift. It could be the Doppler effect, the star could be moving away, I don't know, and nobody knows, okay? It could be the light is being speeded up or slowed down as it goes past a dense gravitational mass in space. We simply don't know what's causing the red shift. Next question, I get to ask this question quite frequently.